enjoyable players to watch. And um, so, you know, a lot of people in LA that <clears throat> wanted, wanted me to say hi to Fred from, you know, and uh, <clears throat> wish him the best. That's their message from LA to Fred. Okay, send my greetings back because I remember I had a very good time when I met you uh, guys there in LA, some uh, exhibition and tournaments. I met many nice people and also Ricky family. Uh, uh, was very, very enjoyable time. So thank you again for that time, long time ago, and say hello to, to your father for sure, your wife, and uh, and all the people I met there. Well, do. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I will start with a question that was uh, presented to me by um, Vicky Pineda from LA. Um, he, <clears throat> he listened to the part one of this uh, conversation and you mentioned, Fred, that you felt that you were pretty strong mentally. Um, his question is, do you think experience got you there or did you get some coaching from somebody to help you develop that strength? Uh, of course, I, I learned that a little bit um, about my, my, myself, by myself, let's say. Also, during the years, you get better and better. And I think it's not only about me, but all the top players, you know, the, the best player at the moment are uh, uh, in the 50s, 50 years old. Um, and um, they all uh, have kind of a really strong mental because they learn about the years. And also it's not only, it's difficult to learn by yourself. You have to, uh, you can use a mental coach. One time I talked to a mental coach, but it's not so, such a long time ago. It's about uh, maximum 10 years ago. I talk one time, but it was very easy for me because I recognized everything he said. I, I recognized what I was thinking by myself. It was just kind of a reminder. And um, uh, there are many, many, many tricks or uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can read. It's very interesting, actually. If you are uh, into that, you can find, I think you can find easily a book or uh, on the internet now, uh, many things are published. Uh, about the uh, mental uh, mental approach of the game also. Um, I was also, uh, you know, I make some YouTube videos sometimes and I, I was talking a little bit about that, but it was in Dutch language. Maybe one day I will try to make, uh, to make that in, uh, in Spanish and English for the people um, because it's actually the, the theory is very easy very easy to understand and to catch. The most difficult part is to accept uh, this, you know? You read and you say, okay, yeah, it's easy, but when you're in the game, it's very common to fall again in the bad mental uh, thinking. So it's a very, very exercise. And when you are ready and uh, open to accept your yourself and your failure, failures, it's more easy to play better and to be better mentally. Just a little yeah. bit summary about uh, what uh, what I think about that. I see. Okay. Yeah, because I actually have this conversation with lots of people, uh, you know, Mexican players, uh, top Mexican players, top Colombian players that travel to LA every now and then. So I try to ask, how is it that they, you know, improved over the years? And most of them, their answer is uh, they worked on their mental strength, their mental approach to the game, more so than the actual playing of the game. Of course. But if you want, I can explain. Uh, I think it may be interesting. I can take five minutes and explain a little bit about that so you will know. Yeah, be because, sure. uh, the, you know, uh, just starting by this, you know, the player, when he finish a game, most of the time they say, they see, they notice in the game, the parts where they were not lucky. Most of the time people finish the game and, oh, I was not lucky that game. This is very, very common. 95% of the people just say, I was not lucky. So uh, let me tell you, lucky, first of all, I talked already to many people and, and there are many people who don't accept what I say. But listen to me now. Why should I be more lucky than you in the game? Why? Because they, they re, there was a kind of, uh, not rumor, but uh, people saying that Jaspers was very lucky generally, you know, because he make a shot and he touched the third ball on the right way and he get more easy. If he touch like this, he get difficult. If he gets like this, it's easy. 
So they say Jasper is more easy. That's why he's number one in the world. <laughs> they don't say that, but the, the, why then there is a ranking? It's a ranking of lucky people or skilled people. <laughs> yeah. That's the first point. Yeah. So you cannot say... Uh, uh, also, when you play a game, of course, you have lucky moments. You make a fluke, you uh, you make few points uh, after the fluke, so you enjoy the fluke, you are lucky. Lucky moments. If you take a game, let's say you have, normally, I believe there is 50-50% chance or luck and unluck. So sometimes you make lucky shots, sometimes you make missed unlucky. Okay? 50-50. So when I finish my game and I say I am not lucky because I take out of the game one or two shots that I, I was not lucky, I'm not honest because I have parts where I, where I was lucky. Yes. It's even not really fluke, but sometimes you pass a kiss that you didn't expect like this, but you don't say nothing. It looks like normal. Yes. So this is the how you, how you analyze the game is wrong when you when you only see the parts where you are not lucky and the opponent is lucky. This is the first part. No, I think when you if you win a game or I mean if you lose a game, you should better try to find the point in the game where you could have won the game instead of losing. Not by the luck because you cannot control. Luck is something you cannot control. But where did you make a mistake? That's the point. So I think when when I tried also because you know it's human. I mean it's human to say uh, to see when it when you are not lucky. It's human. It's not. I'm not criticizing. I try to help. Uh, just uh, don't misunderstand me. Eh? Um, no. When. Fred, your your mic. Um, yes. The, the, it's, it sounds like you're bumping the mic. I don't know if you are, and then it, it then your your voice goes out. So just to let you know. Oh, I don't know what. Now the, you're uh, fine. You're fine now. Okay, okay. You sound, fine now. You sound perfect now. Okay. Um, so I want to say that you you better when you lose a game, you better check where were your mistakes in the game. So you can lose even by very far, but imagine you are you play 40 points and it's 20, 20, you miss a very easy shot. And then your opponent make a fluke, he makes seven, and uh, the game is over. Why? Because at the time you think, ah, it's unbelievable. He make a fluke, it make the difference in the game. But the difference is the in the game is the lucky shot you missed. Because I also believe in um uh punishment you know you miss a lucky shot and then you get angry whatever yeah. you change your mind and it looks like at the moment at that time the universe is punishing you, uh, punishing yeah. you. Yeah. and uh, the opponent make a fluke make a lucky shot and then you come to the table he missed he make a uh, kiss miss the ball rolling you get impossible impossible point uh this is your punishment because also of first missing easy shot and thinking negative. So yeah. also you have to think it's impossible to change the past. So if your opponent make a fluke, that you uh, get angry or not, that you are uh, uh, thinking negative or positive, it will not change that he make a fluke. So you better think about, okay, things happen. You just have to Okay, next inning is my time, and I try to make the best out of it. That's great advice. I wish I could follow that advice. It just seems like you get in a game, and, and it just, no matter what happened, you miss the point. And then, of course, you leave your opponent an absolute natural, you know. And it just, it, it, it almost kind of, it's like it snowballs on you. And what you're saying is you got to kind of shut that that little voice in your head. You got to kind of shut that down. Whatever happened in your last miss can't do anything. That's in the past. But it's hard. You can say, for me, it's difficult. 
you know. Yeah. It, but I want to tell you something more. Of course, I didn't finish because it's a long story, eh? believe me. So imagine you play a game and you 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 miss uh, some shots and you think you are not lucky. Uh, there is a snowball snowball effect. So you you start thinking negative. The point is to get out of this thinking as soon as possible. As long as you are not outside of this thinking, the snowball rolling will get bigger and bigger and bigger. It means you will miss by nothing. You will have kisses which are out of nowhere. Uh, you will give a lot of good position. Believe me, good position. The guy, your opponent, will not play good, but he will make the points. He will get very lucky. And after lucky, he will make a lot of points. It will be, you will be punished according to your thinking. So the most you think about negative, the most you get punished. I noticed that by my experience. And believe me, I, I, fought, I fell also many times in that thinking. I'm not, uh, I'm just explaining something that should be to help the people. But this is a really diff difficult story. But I, I, I know I won many games in my life that I was really down in the game, feeling, feeling like this. And one moment, why? I don't know. I forced myself or I was helped by somebody. I just stopped thinking. And then I say, you know, also it's in the attitude. Also very important. You know, I don't know. I will put myself a little bit further from the... So, you know, there are many players who are sitting like this on the chair. You know, it means they are losing. They are losing. They are getting everything, the bad luck, the bad position, blah, blah, blah. And one day, one second, you can go like this and sit down and wait like, uh, no, it will be my turn. Just changing your, your attitude, your thinking. And you go to the table. And I noticed many times you can change the game mentally. It solves Strange, maybe, but I noticed many times also when you are inside of this snowball and you think, no, it's okay, it's over, no, I, I will fight. It happens many times that my opponent missed a very easy shot because I, I just think, no, okay, let's go, let's fight, let's change the mind. Oh, and I say, yeah. and you think, oh, it's working. And you go and you are again positive in the game and you can't turn a game that you are losing by thinking like this. This is very, uh, this is really difficult to accept for many people that they are causing their, their bad game. <laughs> yes. Another last example. Imagine you have, you start a game and you have one point in 10 innings. It can happen. It's very common. And then you say, ah, oh, I don't feel the table. I don't get position. So difficult. Uh, the table is sliding, blah, 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 blah. If you think like this, maybe you make a 0 0.2. You finish and you have uh, five points in 19 innings. Your opponent make everything. You lose everything. You can also think differently. My average, which is my average? Let's count a player who play one average. When he has one in 10 innings, he can make easily 30 in 30 innings. Because your average, you make your average not by making one every inning. So when you make a, take a whole game, you have one five, you have zero, zero, one, zero, two, one, to make one average at the end. If you think in a game there are bad parts and good parts, if you think I have one in 10 innings, so I need to make 29 in 20 innings to have one average, which is for a one average player is something normal should be could be normal if you think okay i have my bad part in the game no my good part will come because if normally it's like this your average you will play your average yeah. so i many games i started also playing 50 points and i i have a very bad start which is a bad start for me can be a 10 in 10 innings and it happens and then I think, okay, I try to finish before 25 innings. 15 innings, 40 points I have to make. Uh, 15, 40 points, which is possible for me. And many times I finished even before 25 innings. So just mental, mental work on yourself. Accept that you are having 
bad moment in the game, accept also and believe it will change. Uh, and I... time, then you have a chance to make a good game still. If you keep saying, ah, I'm not lucky, my arm, my the air conditioning is too cold, uh, the music is too hard, the, the table is too fast, then you better stop because you will lose. You better stop. You, you damage yourself if you continue. You know, how many players they finish and they are so hurt because of that. If you think positive and you try to make your best, even just that, okay, I, am, I have a bad game, I'm starting not so good, my opponent play well and is lucky, but I try to enjoy and try my best. And then you can make a good game and even enjoy, enjoy. And your opponent make a lot of points. Okay, enjoy and be happy for him. Even you try to, to beat him. And then you will enjoy more the game and make better results for sure. Voila. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> oh, that no. makes perfect sense. Uh, it's so much of the game is psychological. And uh, you almost, I don't, I, I don't want to use the word faith, but you have to have some confidence in yourself and you can't dig that hole. You know, if you're mentally digging that hole, it's, you're just going to go down deeper and deeper. And so it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, do you, what do you, it does to me what do, you do, Ricky? No, it does. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, like I said, I don't play as well as Fred, maybe half his average. But I, I think I can remember uh, many, many games where I won the same way. Like, you know, I make mistakes. I just forget about it. And I'm like, OK, now my good positions are going to come for me. I'm going to play well. And I won many games, you know, of course, against lesser opponents than what Fred is used to playing. But, you know, still, because I think my... I think the biggest quality in my game is the mental aspect of the game. I think I have uh, many difficulties with shots that a lot of people in LA, in the US play way better than me. But I think what keeps me competitive against them, it's the mental, uh, my mental approach to the game. You know, so I agree with everything you said. So yeah. you, re you remember that I think Steve, you wanted to ask me a question from um... Um, some people, many people ask me many times, I had a, a game that I played against the uh, Jaspers, that I was losing 44 to 7. I was just going to ask that question. Are you a mind reader too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we talked already. You, we talked already. <laughs> but uh, I want to tell you the, that is the, the kind of game I have seven points in maybe 15 innings. And I was also thinking, okay, I always try my best. I want to win. It's a... Uh, important tournament, a good price money, playing against Jaspers, a lot of people, camera, you want to perform something nice. And I, I, I do nothing. I have seven in 15 innings. He had 44, if I remember well. So yes. I said, okay. 40, okay. 44, seven. That was the that is one moment I said to, to myself, okay, whatever, I lose. Also, you know, you are thinking at the moment, oh, imagine I lose 50 to seven. Oh, I look ridiculous. <laughs> this feels very stupid. People will make fun of you, and uh, all uh, everything is going through your mind, and it makes you play bad also. Because after uh, some innings, I feel okay. He will kill me. He will destroy me. And people, what people are thinking, they are watching me. Uh, I feel stupid. And one moment, I changed. I didn't do anything. I changed. I I said to myself, okay, whatever. I lose. I lose. I, I cannot do better. I, I try my best. And I think, I hope I have, I make 10 and maybe a little bit more if I have a chance. So it will be maybe a not so bad feeling. And uh, why? I don't know. Because I accept I was losing and playing like this. It was okay for me. And I start to play to make a lot of points. So, and also I have to say at the same time, I did, it's not that I finished my last, four, last 43 points in uh, five innings because I, I received these chances by, by him. He still needed six points and it, it took uh, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 innings. I don't remember exactly. But uh, at the time, he didn't finish his six last points. Imagine he make five, five and one or, or he finished three innings later. I have um, maybe 12 points still 
or, or 20. Yeah. So well, it, well, it didn't hurt that you had a run of 20 points. I mean, yes. that didn't hurt. <laughs> it helped a lot. It helped a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Now that we are talking about some memorable games, uh, you know, that game, I think most of us that follow billiards remember that game. There's also another game that uh, somebody asked me to ask this question. Is it a game where you ran 28 points against Marco Zanetti? Uh, the two questions that they asked me is, one, how nervous were you shooting the 29th point? And the other one is, at the end of the game, what was your feeling about the game? Were you happy because you ran 28? Or were you upset because you ran 28 and lost? Like, what was the, the, your feeling after the game, too? Yeah, it, it is a really memorable, memorable uh, game. And uh, uh, first, uh, first part of when I when I received my number 29 points, I make a, actually I make my number 28. It was a cut shot, I remember. And I think if, yeah, if I play that speed and uh, I really receive good position for number 29 and. Uh, Looks very nice, and the number twenty-eight was quite easy. I make the shot, and you know what? The, there are many problems when you make a big run. You know, there are uh, there is the public is you hear a lot of noise in the public, people talking ah oh, oh ah uh, oh, boom. and then there is a moment the referee say Shh. so they stop the time, they stop uh, like uh, uh, and and. You, they, they bring you out of your game. But it's my mistake, I know, because it happens many times. So, and I go to 29, and it's a position, everybody look on the internet, very easy, very easy. I know also, if you start by this position, you are always happy. But then I started also to see, oh, if I touch too thick, I can have a kiss, there is a dragon ball maybe coming. I, you start thinking about a lot of things. And when I decide to take my, my thickness, I could not feel the shot. It, I was not nervous by the body. My body was okay. The stroke was okay. But I could not focus on the line. I could not feel the line. Normally, it's also something I cannot... Uh, uh, there is no system for that shot because it, the ball was close to the second, to the long cushion, to the long rail. So I have to play kind of a little bit thinner than easy and with English and feel the line. I could not feel the line anymore. It was really, really strange feeling. I never had in my life for an easy shot. Normally I look, I see the line, touch third, third of the ball, English speed. It was impossible. I see. Uh, well, Your thanks. mic is off, Fred. Oh, I'm sorry. We couldn't hear you the last two seconds. Yeah, your voice cuts out every once in a while. I don't know what happens, uh, Not well, but it's okay. You're um, fine. You're was, fine now. Uh, there was nothing important. I say that I could not feel anymore. This this ball, I could not feel. So, I see. Strange. And the second part to the question is, after the game, were you happy because you tied the uh, world record, or were you upset that you lost that match? Like what was the uh, uh, the, the, the feeling thing, that took over course, the most? Of course, I was I was uh, double disappointed. Even I didn't show because I don't like I don't have to complain because uh, it's a game. Uh, I was really disappointed for twenty nine, of course, and disappointed to lose the game because. Uh, but about losing the game, I have to tell you that also, when I make twenty eight, I think I was losing by fifteen to three. Yeah, I make twenty eight. Uh, going to 31 to 15, but he ran, I think, immediately nine behind my my 29, my 28. So uh, the score was immediately 31 to 20, 24. So it was, people also told me, how, oh, is it possible to lose by running 28? And I say, okay, but you have to watch the game like this. And I must say, after uh, 28, and uh, I... I and uh, it was really difficult to, to keep the same level after 28. You know, there is kind of pressure going down. And uh, okay, it's uh, that's the game because it was uh, uh, finally it was a game 40 to 
30, 37, 38, I don't remember exactly, in 13 innings. It was a wonderful game, uh, finally. But my feeling was not, of course, you can imagine, if I run 29 and I lose, I feel better than lose by running only 28. I mean, only. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Nice. Okay. Uh, and the other question I have another about games, about memorable games. Which is your most memorable memorable game that you ha that you have a uh, that you feel fond of? You feel happy about? You feel good remembering it? Which is your game that is, you go to the game? Yeah, there is a game uh, when I was world champion in Bogota in uh, 1999 when I played the final against Blondal. Uh, it was for me. I was okay. I was already 30 30 years old, 31 years old. Uh, it was not my first international tournament. I won. Uh, already uh, a few World Cup at that time. But um, I remember that Blomdal was at the time was really uh, far above everybody, he was winning uh, many tournaments every year. And uh, he, he ran into the final by uh, winning all game by 3-0, uh, you know, he didn't lose any set. It was a set system at the time. He didn't lose any set, so 3-0, 3-0, everybody was, uh, was killed. And uh, for me, it was really a difficult tournament because I was kind of a, a young three cushion player, let's say, at that level. And uh, uh, in the in the you know in Bogota, uh, it's usual to see two thousand people in the in the playing room uh, for the final. So I was kind of uh, not really expecting that. So I was really happy to be in the final. And I started by the final, and I I won the first set. And I said to myself, "Wow, this is a really." Good performance because uh, nobody won set against Blondal. <laughs> so I was so, so happy already. Uh, continue, I win the second set. I was thinking, wow, what happens? What happens? Uh, actually, I had a good chance to win the third set to win 3 0, but I finally I lose the set. But I won the fourth set. So I was world champion beating Blondal, who was at the time kind of unbeatable. This is really a. Uh, very special memory also. Um, I have also a second one, if I can tell you. Also against Blondal. Uh, I played a final of uh, a semi-final of a World Cup in um, Istanbul. Also uh, around that time, it was maybe around 2000 somewhere. Uh, I remember also Kölemans was still playing. And uh, if I win the semi-final against Blondal, Kölemans is winner of the world ranking already. He doesn't have to play uh, the next game. He, he was also in the semi-final, but he didn't have to win even the semi-final. Final. And I play against Blomdal, and uh, uh, Blomdal make it, uh, if I remember well, in the third set or in the fourth set, set in one inning. 15 in one inning, so I didn't play. And in the fifth set, I started by 11. So also very memorable. And I was, I came to 14-9 in my advantage and I have a match point. And I remember, I will remember all my life, I had to play a long round versay on the long cushion passing. It was kind of um, not very easy, but I, I was confident because it's the kind of shot I play very well. I shoot the shot and uh, I, I realized when I shoot that I didn't put enough or the ball was still sliding on the short cushion and I missed by one hair, of course. And at that time, Blomdal came to the table. He finished by six with a, a lucky shot inside. <laughs> and, and the last one, he avoided the, the, the kiss also by a big miracle. So that's also the point. If I make the last shot, there is no chance to, for him to be lucky. So I get punished by a small mistake. And uh, but finally, it was really uh, hard because final also against Blondal, and uh, Blondal won the World Cup ranking. And I know at the time I was kind of very close to Raymond, and uh, I did not play only for him, but I should be very happy uh, that he could win the world world ranking, the World Cup ranking actually. So there are maybe two two memories that I. Telling to many people many times. <laughs> I see. Those are good to hear. I mean, I think this is that's the kind of uh, uh, stories that the people are are 
you know, waiting to hear from sure. from this kind of conversation, you know. Absolutely. Matter of fact, you took both my questions. So oh, I, did I, I come up with something else. No, I have a question, and this is happening in the United States with pool. Uh, there are tournaments going on, and uh, there's interference between people that want to drug test the player. He might be, for example, in between matches, and all of a sudden, you can just come up to that player and say, we are going to drug test you right now before your next match. There are times when uh, two really good players were going head to head and it came down and, you know, it was very close and, and the person lost. And right after that, the people administering the decision as to who gets tested had tested him right then, you know, I got to go test you after you just lost a crucial match. So here's my question. What kind of drug uh, testing is done in South Korea uh, to us? Do they have rules similar uh, to the UMB regarding drug testing? Uh, I was surprised because I thought you would you would ask me which kind of drugs do you do you can you use before that you was going to be my <laughs> hey, that was going to be my second question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know I I want to tell you first a story uh, also kind of anecdote very interesting. I play many many times in Holland in the Dutch competition. And they did every week almost there was a testing uh, in uh, every game. One game they pick up one game in the for the testing, and from the game they pick up four players, two from each team by a drawing, and they make test um, normally after the game, never do, uh, between or just after after the games are finished. Oh, they don't tell you, of course, and then oh, you have to come and. Uh, and there is one week, my team has been tested for uh, 10 days, three times. So when they make a drug testing, like a doping test, uh, sometimes it's coming from the, I don't know exactly, the government or the sports uh, ministry or whatever, but they did three tests. So we played, it was like this, one Sunday we make competition tests. They came test our team. They pick up two guys. The same week we played Dutch Cup by team, four days. They pick up our team, two guys. And the Sunday, one more game, one more test. I will tell you that this is very stupid. First, we, if they cannot coordinate their test, this is very stupid because if I if I test negative today, I probably am I'm negative tomorrow. I my opinion, or opposite way, or whatever. And Raymond Kuhlmann was very upset at the time because he said, uh, one time even he said no. He said, today, no. I was tested Monday. I'm uh, I'm really tired of this. And he normally he has to do it. It's the kind of law or rules. But he was so, so not upset. Raymond never lose control. But uh, uh, he said, it's unbelievable. What are you doing here we, last week? And even after the, the time he said no, next Sunday again. So it was very strange. So also um, there is there are some kind of rules about the, the testing. If you have to take some drugs for your health, even the drugs help you to feel actually when you are sick, for whatever and you take drugs to be better, it's a doping. Okay, it's logical. You have to you change your condition, you feel bad because of okay, something. You change your condition, you feel better, so you can play. Even drugs are accepted or not accepted, every kind of pill is drug, and it should not be accepted if you make kind of uh, uh, clear and uh, I don't know what I because 
there are some pills, uh, beta blockers, they call it in, uh, you yeah. know, for heart, yeah. which makes you feel better and play better. It's on the list. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. It's on the list. I know many things you can take even before some years ago. Um, throat uh, drops with uh, lidocaine was not accepted. It's a drug. It was on the doping list. So you, if you are, you are sick and you have uh, throat problems, you cannot take the, the good one, which is relieving you. So it's, and also I know I, some uh, years ago, I had some uh, trouble with the uh, allergy in the summertime. Um, I, I had some asthma, a little bit attack sometimes. So I needed to, I had a spray, which I make every day and nothing happened, never. This product is on the list, forbidden. So what I can do, I go to the, I had to go to the special doctor of the government, make the test. And then he can accept if I can take the drugs of, or not. So I get a document which says, okay, if I have a doping test and they said I'm positive because of that, I can show my document and say it's accepted. So this is a very, very strange rule to my opinion. Yeah, I, I just it's forbidden, wonder. but I can take it. It's forbidden, but I can take it. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, but it means, it means that I know that there are some players. I will not say names, of course, because they don't do. Oh, I don't know. I don't say they, but who takes a lot of pill for the for the health, a lot, because they have to, for the heart, for the tension, for the whatever, and half of them are forbidden. So they take. They have a document, so it's doping, but it's okay. I don't know. It's a very strange uh, rule yeah. about uh, about uh, that also. Yeah. It seems like the whole thing is arbitrary. Like they just, some committee makes up rules. Uh, and, and, I, I tell you something else. Uh, some years ago, from the WADA, we had, they pick up some players from the world ranking, uh, maybe the first eight of the world ranking. Uh, they had the obligation to fill a special paper on internet, a special uh, rules, or uh, you had to say all year in advance, one year in advance, where, where you will be in competition. So imagine I played 200 games in the year. So I have to go on the system, internet system. Feel, okay, on the 2nd of January, I will play in Holland. I have to put the place. I have to put uh, the address, telephone number of the place. Um, I have to uh, to give uh, what time I will be there. And it's possible they come anytime to make a test for me. Whenever you are not on, uh, on competition, you have to put a time every day where you will be home with the possibility to be tested, to give one hour time in the, in the day so you imagine what kind of uh, job it is. It was. So I need I needed a secretary to make this, and also imagine they come. I so one guy told me you have to put a testing in the morning, like uh, six o'clock in the morning. Even you are sleeping, you are sure you are home. Imagine you put testing between one and two in the afternoon. But oh, you can give me twenty seconds. Yes, of course. Take no problem. That's just crazy. I didn't have any idea that they could actually drug test someone on their day off. Am I hearing that right? 20 seconds. <laughs> yes. Take your time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's just crazy. So you're not even playing in a tournament. You're at home. And they can come to your house and drug test you? Is that what I did? I hear that right? <laughs> I get tested. I get tested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> is alcohol on? What are the main drugs? Uh, wait a minute. I'll wait till he's back. 
Yeah, give him a, a few seconds. Yeah, give him a break. <clears throat> yeah. So, are you gonna be uh, you gonna be playing in Arizona then? Yeah, I'll be I'll be running the tournaments and playing the tournaments. Boy, that's you know I've done that before, and that to me uh, is so tough because you're trying to you know you're you're focusing your attention is divided in too many directions and you're trying to make everybody happy you're trying to accommodate everybody you want to be fair to everyone and yet you have to focus on your game that is tough i you know you handle it, it is, but you handle it very it well yeah i'm used to it by now like you know there are certain situations that uh get some get my attention while i'm playing a game but uh, like I said, I, I I think I'm mentally I'm approaching the game, the tournaments pretty well. I try not to let other situations affect the way I'm playing. So yeah, I'm used to it. Now, if I lose, I never complain that it's because I'm doing both things at the same time. It's because I played a bad game. I mean, no, so yeah. I'm used to it for now. Yeah. So welcome right, back. Back back to the drug thing. Did I misunderstand you? What, did you say that they can drug you if you're at home kicking back? Can it they was the, so at the time was the system was like this. So after I fill fill all my year uh, agenda, they could test me anywhere where I where I where I should be. So I tell you, for example, what I wanted to you to do. If I put I'm home from one to two, they can come from one to two in the afternoon. But imagine you put this long time before, whatever, because you think about your agenda, you go to the bakery for 20 minutes, they come to your house, you are not there. Be absent is one uh, um, mark okay. against you? Yeah, you can be absent two times and after oh, okay. they consider you are positive. It, it's kind of refusing the test. Oh, okay. The rule was very, very, very strong, but I have never been tested. During that time, it may be a few years I had to do that. Yeah, I have never been tested because of that system. Yeah, so you imagine, and uh, there are some players who, who re even refused to do that because they say, Okay, uh, you come when I have competition, but they consider you can be tested anytime, you can, you can be uh, positive anytime, you can use drugs for playing anytime. I don't know. I don't know. The mentality was very strong, yeah, uh, very strange. But anyway, there is no doping control here. Oh, okay. So, so you so can you can take any drug basically you want, and you're not going to be tested. Yeah, is but that you why know, you is that why you moved to South Korea? Yes, Steve. Steve I'm, I'm coach. He, <laughs> he will not tell the, he he will not tell us what it is. <laughs> That's his place well, we will get we will be too strong, maybe. <laughs> oh, no testing at all, right? Uh, at the moment, no, no, I don't think so because uh, I suppose it's a uh, stuff of um, of official federation, like uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I uh, I suppose. Yeah. But the oh. test is very strange because what, once again, I have played uh, uh, 30 years, uh, the, 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 all the tournaments all over the world. There were some uh, moments we have been tested many, many times, also during tournaments, World Cup tournaments. I remember one time I was tested in Portugal and one time in Egypt. Outside of this, there have been... Uh, uh, other testing because they test only the first four or the first two in the final. I don't remember exactly, but uh, uh, as I have not ever been there every time, I remember myself tested two times and uh, maybe a few more times other people that I heard. But uh, if you imagine uh, in 30 years I played, there have been maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I, let's say 100 tournaments. I heard about testing five or six times. If you go on the cycling Tour de France, they they are tested uh, every day, maybe. Every day. So if you make or you make professional or you don't make at all. Yeah. You know. And also, uh, uh, 
uh, that's a discussion I had with, uh, of, or a talk, not a real discussion with people. Uh, what could you use to get better? I really never get answer. So probably there are things who make you feel cool, but you don't have to be cool. You need stress to play better, to perform better, sure. to my opinion. Yes. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you can help me. You can help me. <laughs> Back to you, Ricky. Your next question. My next question. Let me. My next question is. Um, you know, the games in uh, tournaments in Colombia, uh, Vietnam, uh, you know, the audience is very loud. They cheer, you know, really hard. And uh, in Europe, most, most most tournaments, you know, it's pretty quiet uh, audience. And uh, the question is what I think I have an idea that, you know, both of them don't really um, matter to you. You play on both uh, settings, but which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the quiet or do you like the cheering by the audience? Uh, I never thought about that. <laughs> uh, I, I like there is an atmosphere, of course, in the in the game. So uh, people making noise is not a very big problem. And actually I like it when they support. Also for, uh, if they support, I like the support for both or uh, there is a part of the public for one player and a part for the other. It's very nice. Sometimes you, I remember also, uh, I played in Istanbul one, uh, one, uh, one game against Tazdemir. In a, it was a very small room, one of the worst tournaments in Istanbul because most of the time they make uh, good tournaments in Turkey. But uh, it was a very small room and a lot of people very close to the table. And I played against Tazdemir and I really could feel a, a very. Uh, Bad, bad atmosphere for me. It was very awful, even. Uh, but uh, most of the time, uh, it was nice. Or what uh, we were talking about, Colombia '99, my my uh, my world championship. I remember my first time in Colombia in uh, 1998 uh, when I played the tournament. Also, first time uh, more than thousand people in the public, and I played my first round against uh, A Vega. He's from Ecuador, but still uh, Ecuador, uh, uh, Latin people uh, support each other. And uh, I remember, I didn't know Avega at the time, first time. He was a very, very strong player and the public was so supporting for him. I remember 2-2, two, two, best of two, five, 2-2, two, two. we go to the toilet, to the bathroom, public was screaming, Lucho, Lucho, Lucho. I, I get so, so nervous at the time. <laughs> I also, uh, uh, I played also my quarter final against um, uh, Colombian player. I just uh, forgot his name. Bedoya. Um, Bedoya, Jaime Bedoya. Yeah, how can I forget? Uh, also, same situation, two, two, and uh, all the public is Colombian. So it was really, really, very, very uh, atmosphere. I cannot say it was negative because. They, they really appreciate my game also. And finally, I won the final against uh, Carlos Alon, which I think also uh, originally, I don't know if it's Colombian or... I don't think it's Colombian. I think it's uh, Nicaragua, maybe. Okay, I, uh, it's okay. But uh, then also, really, I played very good the final. I won easy. He beat uh, Raymond Bergman in the semifinal. Uh, and the, the game was so nice for me because I played very well and the public was also really supporting me uh, equally, let's say. And uh, when I finished, I could feel really warm, warm people uh, 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 appreciating my game and, uh, and congratulating me, uh, many, many people. So it was so you feel as a as a sportsman, you'll feel very important and very appreciated. It's a very good feeling. Yes. Okay. So really, the not the silent room is very like uh, we have uh, we have had during the COVID some tournaments here in Korea without public, and it the feeling is really really uh, uh, that also I remember the, the McCreary tournament maybe you of course right. remember, yeah. so it's yeah. just a few years ago uh, there is no public at all we play in the room two players one writer one referee and the uh, cameras a little bit. Uh, so imagine I won the final against Eddie and uh, 
I, I had to, they told me, oh, sure, you are happy. Of course, I'm happy. You make like this, but there is no, no nobody voice. Nobody no thing. Not even one. <laughs> so it was so very strange, very strange feeling. Even it was a wonderful tournament. There's nothing to say about the many yeah. tournaments like this are very nice, but it doesn't mean uh, the atmosphere was very strange when there is no people to imagine. Yeah, I didn't understand that concept at all. It was different. I liked it. I liked the matches and everything. Uh, but without having people, I just, you know, they should have had a track where they would have a tape recording of people going, hey, you know, or whatever. But uh, okay, yeah, my a... question, isn't it? All right. Go ahead. <laughs> is, it, is it my turn? Yes, sir. Okay, you're in charge. I just want to give permission here. All right. Were you invited or were you eligible to compete in the World Games in Birmingham, Alabama, or not? And if not, why not? No, I was not uh, qualified anyway, because first of all, I'm suspended. Remember, I'm suspended. And this is a UMB, uh, UMB not a UMB tournament, but it's part of the UMB. And uh, the way of qualifying is uh, there are rules about that and uh, uh, the world champion uh, some players from the European ranking if I know some players from the Asian ranking and some players from African ranking and and things like this I was not um, uh, qualified but I want to tell you something about the World Games. I'm, uh, of course, every organization and publicity is always welcome. I have played one in the World Games in Germany, in Salzburg, Germany. It's very easy. It was uh, two hours driving from my home. Uh, it's part of Olympic Committee, you know. Uh, uh, I, I had to go to a uh, Olympic... Uh, center in Belgium uh, to get a dress because you play special dress. Uh, when you are out of the tournament, you have to walk with the, the shirt of the Belgian delegation. Uh, there are many rules about that. There are many rules. Um, like you have to go to the dentist before you go. It was a rule in Belgium because they are afraid if you are during the, the World Games, you are playing and you have a tooth problem. They are uh, kind of panicked. They have to be sure your two teeth are okay. <laughs> it, I mean it. It's really, I swear, it's uh, it's reality. I have been there playing in the World Game and I... <laughs> sports, okay? I enter, you go register, you get a badge, you enter, and then you are nobody. I walk there, I see nobody I know, nobody talk to me. I have my game one o'clock, I play my game, finish, bye-bye. Nobody talk to you, you see nobody. Maybe, I don't know, it was maybe, a, maybe it was not the best World Games that was organized, I don't know. Uh, most of the time in the World Games, the table condition, I think it's not always very good because uh, they, they need to make an offer to get sponsoring. So sometimes you get table you don't know, you get balls you don't know, and you get a cloth that you don't know, that never been used in Karom. Uh, that's uh, one point. I know also um, it may be hard to talk about that. There is no prize money. This is the Olympic dream. Is There is no prize money. I have I had the chance one time to go to uh, I think Taiwan. Uh, I, they, I was qualified to go, and I said Really, I don't go. I don't go to the to Taiwan for uh, I don't know one week. Uh, spend my time in the country. I had to have a, a representative for my country to to follow me uh, always. Uh, share a room with him with somebody I don't know, uh, not so well. Um, I, I said I'm sorry. I in the time I go to there first, you have jet lag. You come back, you have jet lag. You lose one week or 10 days because you have, last time I heard you have to stay, uh, whatever. I said at that time I can work or uh, give lesson or make exhibition or whatever and earn a living. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm talking about the money, but it's like this. No, I uh, 
I saw also the, the World Games here in the, the last one in Alabama. It was, uh, first of all, it was not broadcasted, as I heard. So impossible to follow the games live, even YouTube camera, it was not, uh, was not uh, possible. There is no prize money. Uh, and uh, it was a wonderful tournament. It was the quality of the games was very high. They are first played wonderful, and there is no image. Yeah. You see nothing. Yeah. So I'm really, I know UMB is chasing against the, uh, uh, behind the, the Olympic dream, but yeah. I don't know because even billiards will be Olympic one day. It's never on television. Right. If well, they have the, you, you imagine you have the, the billiards Olympic, real Olympic games. You think they will show billiard on TV because it's Olympic. So when you, you will tell the people billiard is Olympic sport, okay, and, and what? Just my honest opinion, and I don't want, never want to criticize any organization because every publicity they said is a good publicity, of course. But I think they should better organize different things than this for the billiard, my opinion. Well, they I agree with you. They made a big mistake in, in, in uh, Birmingham. None of, I, I shouldn't say none of the game. I think a portion of the final may have been recorded. I don't even know if it was played live. Can you imagine all those matches People were complaining, trying to find a source to watch the games. And I mean, that's just ridiculous. But nobody it asked. Really me. There was only one game that I was able to see. I think uh, Sammy Sidon live streamed his match against uh, Pedro Gonzalez, but that's the only match that I see that's on, on video anywhere. Yeah. 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 And that's because he had to do it with his phone, you know, on his Facebook. Mm. Right, right, exactly. So you yeah. can imagine what is what is staying over from the tournament, only the statistics. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. a title title for Jaspers is which is very nice. But uh, when Jaspers uh, will not change his name by being a, a world world games winner. Yep. Yeah. Your question, Ricky. Where I just. I think for everybody's sake because everybody's time is is valuable i just want to say we're at an hour 14 minutes so i don't know what kind of schedule you two have i just want to as a courtesy that's where we're at right now so but excuse me for interrupting go ahead ricky no actually i was just gonna ask uh pretty much the last question that i have is uh what are your plans Next, Fred, like uh, I asked because you haven't been to L.A. since 2014. And I I know you go to Mexico every now and then, but I there's been a few years also that you haven't gone to Mexico, right, to do some exhibition matches and stuff. Is that because your schedule with the PBA keeps you pretty busy or is it something else that maybe now you have no opportunity to to come to? do exhibitions yeah you know i'm living uh, mostly in uh, in korea now because now yeah. i will pay uh, uh, maybe 10 days more 20, 12 days more here then i go home for uh, for maybe not even 20 days those so then come back to korea for 3 months then come back home for 6 weeks it's kind of during the year almost impossible to go because the, you you know it's from one jet lag to another one if i go to home for a few days don't go to america or mexico this more jet lag though you i get really crazy i'm not uh, 20 years old anymore and uh, i i uh, appreciate a lot my rest you know <laughs> so mm -hmm. i'm uh, here whole year practicing every day uh, playing tournaments and uh, when i come home i i really need my rest the only time i have is during uh, after the season is finished here uh, somewhere in march till uh, june and um, you know, of course, my wife and me, we appreciate some uh, holiday. I really, really would like to come to um, to L.A. and uh, make a tour in America with my wife, uh, meet meet some people, play some games and take some holiday. 
So I'm really, really thinking to do that as soon as possible. And I cannot put any time on that, <laughs> but I really would like to because I have a, I have still also many friends in New York. I have many friends in LA still I would like to meet again. Well, uh, we'd, so love to, we'd love to have you. I mean, to, having you come to the States again it would be wonderful. So I hope it works out in your schedule. And, uh, and by the way, the lottery here in the States is at a million... Two hundred thousand. So if no, if no, 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 uh, one billion. One billion. Excuse me, I misspoke. Rick. One point two billion. One. What I have to do? Billion. Is, now, that, is there a doping for that? Yeah. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing that up is if Ricky wins, he'll fly over here to the states because you know, I mean, you're just a billionaire, you know. Of course, you can set up a tournament, fly everybody over, and uh, so uh, maybe I'll come join you. <laughs> you know, I've had conversations with my wife about what I would do if I won the lottery. Yeah, and one of the main things is I would build a really, really, really nice billiard room and have really nice tournaments with all the top players, and that's part of my life, you know, billiards now. So I would I do would, something like that. I would do the same thing, Ricky. I would, definitely, yeah. you know, after I took care of my wife and got her mansion and whatever limo she wanted or whatever, uh, some of the money would definitely go to a nice place and uh, have some major uh, payouts for the players. That would be fantastic. Well, yeah. uh, if, uh, if, if there are no other questions, uh, I really appreciate your, your time. Uh, Frederick, and of course, you too, Ricky. It was great conversation. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, whether there's going to be a part three, I don't know, but uh, I really enjoy the conversation. And, you know, when it's live like this, I think it's really kind of good. There were a few audio issues, but isn't it wonderful that uh, here, uh, Frederick's in Ilzan. This is close as I can get. <laughs> and Ricky being in Los Angeles uh, and me in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, you know, hey, if there's going to be a few microphone problems, that's fine. I think it, you know, it's just great to, to be able to have this kind of technology where we can get together. So on that note, if there's no other lasting comments, I just wanted to thank you all and and hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Any uh, thank any, you closing, any closing thoughts uh, from either of you? Myself, just thanks both of you for the time. I really enjoy this conversation a lot, so appreciate both of you. And hope to see you soon. Uh, when you do decide to come to LA, let me know. For sure. Uh, also, I want to thank you both, uh, Steve, to first. Uh, to, to take initiative for this also the last time. And uh, it's very interesting to talk. And you know, I want to say also that I I just try to talk honestly. I Sometimes maybe people don't like uh, 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 some things I say. It's possible, it's for sure. Um, uh, I never want to criticize anybody. I, it's not my, my, my mentality. I uh, uh, just want to bring out something positive from billiards and... Uh, uh, you know, share share many things in billiards is very important because the sport uh, is getting better and people getting better. If the uh, good players like me, one of them, I hope, <laughs> um, can help the people, um, uh, I'm always open to do that in my uh, to contribute from my uh, small part of the evolution of billiards, positive evolution. So anytime you have something I can help like this. Uh, and as Steve said, we are uh, the technology can help us to do that. So uh, I'm always ready. And thank you for your time. Nice thank to you. see you again very nice soon. To see you guys. Take care. All right. Take care. Have a good yeah. weekend, guys. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.